venue, where the first ever branch meeting of the Australian Labor Party took place some 125 years ago. We're a party with a proud history, and I'm proud to have represented Grainler in the Australian Parliament uh, for the last 20 years come the 2nd of March. I'm here today to announce that I will be re-nominating as the Labor candidate for the electorate of Grainler at the upcoming federal election. I do so as a proud Inner West resident. The recent redistribution has cut off an area of Marrickville, Dulwich Hill, Helston Park, Newtown and Camperdown that I have formally represented. And uh, it is disappointing to lose uh, areas that you've represented and that uh, you know well. But I've picked up areas, including the Balmain Peninsula, that I know well and that I'll be very proud to be a candidate for. Uh, I've lived in this community my whole life. I bring a passion and a commitment to be a local representative as well as someone who makes a contribution in the national political debate. I'm in the Australian Labor Party because it is one of the two options of forming government. And it is the party that produces progressive advance for Australia's future, whether it be in education, whether it be in health, whether it be in making sure that we have an economy that's not just about growth, but about inclusive growth an economy that's about jobs and opportunity for all Australians, so that when we look at an area like the Inner West, many people who come from uh, relatively humble backgrounds are able to enter university, are able to make a contribution and to maximise uh, their uh, potential in life. It's the Australian Labor Party that's made that possible whether it be Gough Whitlam's great advances on tertiary education, whether it be the contribution of the Rudd and Gillard governments in particular on education with the Gonski reforms about creating opportunity, the health care reforms supporting uh, public health care, or whether it be in the area of social policy. What we've seen is a great deal of disappointment with the incoming government. Tony Abbott, of course, was someone who not only was stuck in the past, he wanted the rest of Australia to go back there and keep him company. And that was the problem. Someone who was an effective leader of the opposition who never moved beyond saying no. So he was rejected by his own party earlier uh, in his term than any previous elected prime minister in Australia's history. But what we've seen from Malcolm Turnbull is that he now leads a party that is divided within itself. It's at war with itself over a range of issues between the Conservatives and between uh, the moderates within the Liberal Party. That's not the problem, however. The problem is that Malcolm Turnbull is at war with himself. Malcolm Turnbull's at war with the positions that he has held over a political lifetime on the Republic on marriage equality, on taking serious action to avoid dangerous climate change. He has gone from someone who was prepared to stand up for his beliefs when he lost the leadership of the Liberal Party. He said he would not be prepared to lead a party that wasn't prepared to take climate change action seriously. And yet today we have the exact opposite of a conviction politician someone who's traded all of his principles for the keys to the lodge. And that'll be the battle at the election this year, a battle between Labor committed towards advancing Australia's future on education, on health, on fibre to the premise national broadband network, on marriage equality, on all of these issues, and Malcolm Turnbull and a divided Liberal Party. Of course, in this area as well, we'll have a third force. But the Greens political party candidate who's been chosen in this electorate has spent more time in the international socialist organisation than he has in the Greens political party. 
and if he was fair dinkum, he'd run as an international socialist and see how many votes he got there. It's unfortunate that the Greens have been captured in this area and in New South Wales by people who have a history in the Socialist Party of Australia or the International Socialists or the Socialist Workers' Party and want to use the Green banner to advance an agenda that's about anything but the environment. And it'll be interesting to see two tests for the Greens candidate in this uh, seat. One is to actually mention the Liberals, because normally they don't. The second, of course, is to actually mention the environment. Uh, the last two election campaigns I've had as the candidate for Grainler, uh, the Greens candidate hasn't got anywhere near uh, environmental issues. So I stand on my record as a local representative, but also my record uh, in the national parliament, representing the views that are strongly held by this community, and I'm confident I'll be returned as the member for Grainler, but most importantly, I want to be returned as a member of a Labor government, because it is only in government that you can make a real difference in changing the nation. Happy to take questions. Well, you've just said you're confident, but how confident are you? Because you've just uh, made some fairly strong criticisms of the Greens uh, candidate. Um, have, have you got a big fight on your hand against them? I've never taken uh, this electorate for granted. Uh, but if you look at the pendulum, uh, I think you'll find uh, it's really easy to find grain low. At uh, the last uh, election, uh, the Greens uh, political party stood. Uh, their, uh, their state president, uh, Hall Greenland, uh, in this seat. Uh, he at least had a record of involvement in issues like Callum Park. Uh, the current candidate has no local involvement, no local record, uh, nothing to point to, uh, whereby they've engaged uh, in the local community. Um, I've been around a long time, lived in this community my whole life. Uh, I've never seen uh, him at any event or anything else. But then again, I haven't been to international socialist demonstrations against global capitalism uh, in the last few years, so maybe that's why I've missed him. Nevertheless, will it be harder than ever to win this seat? This seat is, is a seat which uh, cannot be taken for granted. Uh, this is a demanding seat. That is as it should be. It's a politicised seat. Uh, people are active uh, in their local community. That's a great thing. That's one of the things that uh, inspires me uh, to keep going. Uh, I'm very proud of the history of this area, the history in terms of the labour movement that began in this very hall and continues today. And I'll be uh, very uh, pleased to uh, continue uh, that tradition if the people of Grainler uh, have their confidence in me as they have in the past but I've never taken it for granted. I've always treated uh, this seat as a marginal seat, even though if you look at the pendulum, uh, it uh, is, uh, is not that. Uh, when I first ran in 1996, uh, Malcolm McCarris wrote in the Herald that the seat was over, I wasn't going to win, the No Aircraft Noise Party were going to win. I think people are looking for authenticity in politics. Uh, people might disagree with me, but what you see is what you get. I stand up for my beliefs. I put my hand up when it counts. Uh, people know what they're getting. Uh, people should have a close look at what the alternatives are in this electorate, what their real views are. Just Google the candidates. It's amazing what pops up and uh, they'll see the views, um, you know, on the environment. Uh, I'm very proud that as Labor's environment spokesperson, I was the person who wrote the policy for the renewable energy target of 20% by 2020. I wrote the policy to ratify Kyoto and introduce private members' bills. I wrote the policy for the green car plan. I wrote the policy for an emissions trading scheme. I wrote the comprehensive plan to deal with climate change that ended up being implemented uh, at the, uh, once we were in government, with, of course, the difficulty that we had that the Greens and the Liberals combined in 2009 uh, to stop there being a price on carbon. 
Remember that. The, the CPRS putting a price on carbon and an emissions trading scheme would have been, in my view today, still policy. The debate would have been over had just two Greens stood up and walked across the floor, um, or the Green senators who were there, two Liberals, did cross the floor. If the Greens had voted for it uh, in the Senate in 2009, it would have been policy, there would have been a price on carbon, and it was an economy-wide price.